I've got a giant rock behind me, but importantly, I've got Jeff Grover, and you do what at Cuesta College? I am an instructor of geology. I've been teaching geology introductory courses for about 35 years. Wow, so you're gonna to explain to me what in the heck, this is Morrow Rock, what is it exactly, Jeff? <laughs> Morro Rock is one of about, uh, depending on how you count, uh, eight, seven sisters, they call them. They're right. intrusive bodies. It's basically the interior portion of a volcano. So okay. they're no longer active volcanoes. They are actually just the plumbing. So how old is this? Okay. We've got pretty solid data to, to date these. On average, uh, about 25 million years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're standing here as a nanosecond of its life. That, that's correct. And, and will it stay another 25 million? Oh, I don't think it's going to last that long. Okay. The erosive power of the ocean, the shoreline, the waves, the wind and rain and so on are going to wear these things down. And my understanding is this got uh, quarried for a period of time. So this, it's actually not as big as it originally was. That's correct. They didn't take anything off the top. But okay. uh, back... Uh, I believe it was in the time of the, around the World War II era. Okay. Uh, they needed rocks to build some of the break. There was that whole, that whole rock shortage. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> rocks are definitely rock rationing. Yeah. Rock rationing yeah. during yeah. the war. Yeah. So they uh, and and beyond, they've also used they've used the rocks to to build some of the breakwaters, particularly yeah. the breakwater nearby at uh, Port San Luis. So you can see some of the scars on the side, and we're kind of looking at an yeah. edge of the, of the... Yeah, and this isn't the side I think people are used to from the tourist postcards, but this is the side facing the ocean. And there's there's a wildlife up there. Tell me about that. Absolutely. We're uh, at a beautiful location for uh, birds. This is one of the great birding locales in California, for the United States for that matter. And there are nesting peregrine falcons up here. Wow. Now, almost every day you'll see someone down here with a, a telescope looking at the falcons. And like everything with nature, there were used to be probably people climbing up there and tourists and kind of ruining everything. Yeah. But now it's a sacred site for, is it, it's two Native American tribes, right? The, That's correct. It, you, it's no longer a place to climb. And right. it, people who do occasionally get up there are pretty quickly <laughs> yeah, rounded up. Yeah, which is appropriate. Uh, correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, I believe it's the Selenian tribe and the Chumash. The local okay. Chumash Native okay. peoples are considered a, a, you know, a, a, a spiritual location. Yeah. For sure. In terms of your teaching your students, mm -hmm. what what is the great lesson from this geological phenomena here? That's a great question. I think for me, what always intrigued me about just geology in general and seeing something like this is that what you see now isn't the way it always is going to be and it isn't what it was in the past. And we can find locations around the world where, you know, visualize a, a volcano up in the Pacific Northwest, Mount Shasta, Mount St. Helens or something. I, I love the idea about going back in time and be able to put things in sort of a a time frame that yeah. uh, we, we as humans have a difficult uh, ability to yeah. try to grasp. Yeah. Tallest mountains in the world are, you know, going to be here for a blink of geologic time, really. Wow. Yeah. Well, Jeff Grover, thanks for your time. My pleasure.